Hello, Oscillator Sync here. I find myself in the very privileged position to occasionally be able to do embargo drop videos with new and interesting stuff, as was the case with the uh, new firmware for the Micro Freak. But one downside to those types of videos is they're usually done with quite a tight deadline. There's almost always something when I come to edit the video where I'm like, oh, I wish I'd talked about this or I wish I'd gone into deeper about this other thing. And when I came to edit my video on the version 5 firmware upgrade for the Micro Freak, I couldn't believe that I didn't talk about turning it into a drum machine. What was I thinking? So in this video, I'm going to fix that oversight and we're going to turn the Micro Freak into a quirky, interesting rhythm machine. Now, before we get started, I'm going to assume that you have some kind of working knowledge of how the new sample engines on the Micro Freak operate. Uh, if you haven't gone and watched my video or someone else's video on these new features, I'd recommend going to do that first because I'm going to kind of breeze past some of those intricacies. But uh, yeah, let's get going. So I'm going to turn the type over to a sample engine. And then what I've done before um, this video started is I have loaded in a bunch of samples, which are drum machine things, plonks and clicks and thunks and all the good stuff. So my idea with this particular way of doing this is I want to actually lay those samples out across the keyboard so that they're quite playable. Uh, and the way to do that is really, really straightforward. Although we now have the alternative random key up feature uh, on this new firmware version, uh, we can still just do keyboard tracking using the key up um, by default. And if we assign one of our assignable slots to the sample slot, and we come down to here in the mod matrix, if I set this to 100%, what that essentially does is per key now give me a different sample, which is very, very nice indeed. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this to be somewhere in the middle so that we have a bit more range on the keyboard. Now, one thing that will be happening with this setup is um, we will still be repitching the samples as we move up the keyboard. Now I've kind of arranged these samples so that they kind of make sense that the high pitched ones are at the end, but I probably want to compress the keyboard a little bit so then the uh, pitch isn't changing quite so much. And the way we can do that is again, making use of the key up for the key tracking. And if we turn the um, pitch all the way down here, what that's going to do is we're going to compress the keyboard so that each um, key doesn't affect the pitch quite as much. So if I take that away, you can hear that it got much higher, much quicker. So although we are still getting some pitch movement here, we have compressed the keyboard a little bit so it's not quite as stuck. So we've now got a bunch of samples laid out across the keyboard. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the mode to, oh, hang on, I just need to come out of there, put the mode to scan grains so we have that time stretching ability. And we've also got the chaos on the shape so we can mess with the samples a bit more. So they're already sounding a little bit more lo-fi, but yeah, um, when it comes to messing with the samples and messing with the sequence, this is going to pay dividends compared to the sort of start length and loop that we have on the default sample engine. So one last thing I'm going to do before I get to um, putting in a um, sequence is I'm going to come into the utility here and into preset and I'm just going to come into modulations and down to velo amp mod and this will just allow me to get a bit of velocity sensitivity and put it in the middle on five. So now if I put only a little bit of my finger on Maybe a little bit more than five, let's go to seven. 
So I've got velocity sensitivity on the sample there as well now, which is um, all good. The other thing I'm going to do just while I'm here is I'm going to go into envelope snap and set that on so we can get slightly pokier envelope sounds if we want to reshape the samples as well. So with everything set up now, let's uh, make a sequence. Uh, so I've got a kick here. I'm just going to make sure I'm in grains mode so we can play around with the sample with the granular time stretching and all that good stuff, which will be fun, I think. So let's... Uh, yeah, let's just uh, do a step, so a step sequence. So things are on. Then I'll just do one, two, three, 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 and then we should have just the floor to the floor going on in there. Bit fast. So now we can start putting some other stuff into the sequence. It's my fun. some stuff going on in there now uh, and now we can start messing with this uh with this drum beat of course and we've got a filter of course which is always going to be good especially with the resonance but we have got our granular processing here as well so we can bring up that density make things really really tight we could reshape things with the envelope. But we could also get into uh, throwing some random stuff. Uh, so maybe if we, uh, yeah, we've got a sample and hold LFO here, and we can maybe send that to like the um, timbre for the density. That might be fun, yes, give that a go. Uh, so, LFO, Tambra. It's not super obvious what's going on there. Uh, maybe, maybe to the way as well. This is monophonic at the moment. 
There's no reason we can't turn on the peripheral here, so... Um, obviously we lose a bit of volume. Almost if we really stretch it. Oh goodness me. Uh, of course, because that's been randomly modulated as well. the high pass filter trick to give it some more bottom end. It's high pass filter. Hello. That's fun. So yeah, uh, what we could also do is of course use the uh, spice and dice to sort of re-imagine the sequence as well. So let's let that go. automation of course which would be I suspect super fun as well hey let's give the other modes uh, a quick go as well uh, so let's give uh, the clouds probably gonna sound weird although we are actually moving the the wave around aren't we with the low density Actually, super cool because we're moving the wave and the timbre around with the randomness. Perhaps we should throw like the cycling envelope on that as well. On um, the timbre, probably. Uh, so, cycling envelope onto timbre. Okay, good. 
So yeah, there's loads and loads of stuff we could do with this to get it to do crazy, wonderful drum things. I apologise if there's some clipping on this recording because I've been going, uh, been enjoying myself a bit too much. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, I certainly did. Uh, leave it a like. Why not? I'm now going to sit and play with this for a while. Uh, so until next time, take care.